Praise the Lord. And praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Let's stand together. I've got no monitor on this mic. If I can get a little monitor. Let's stand together and start our service together. Praise God. Praise God. Uh praise the Lord. Praise him. All right, let's try that again. Why don't we clap our hands to the Lord? Give him praise. Hallelujah. We worship you, mighty God. We give you praise and glory. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you, Jesus. One more time, let's lift our hands. Father, we love you. We worship you. We exalt you. We adore you. You're holy. You're righteous, magnificent, and glorious. Hallelujah. We invite your presence into this place. Yes. Hallelujah. We give you glory today. Hey, Amen. Pastor Ose, lead us in the presence of the Lord with prayer today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise this morning. All unto your name. We bow before you this morning. We are here, Lord, to worship you. We've entered this place with singing, thanksgiving, and praises to your name, Lord. You are worthy. Thank you for what you've done the last one week. Thank you for what you are doing in this place this morning. Thank you for your presence that is mighty already in this place. We worship and praise your name. A chance of days. We give you praise. We give you honor. Jesus in the name. mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the salvation of our soul. We thank you for our deliverance from the pit of hell and from the kingdom of darkness. We thank you for what you are doing here this morning. Be glorified in Jesus' name. We thank you because as many that are not born again, as many that are not saved that we come here today, will be saved in Jesus' name. We thank you because as many that are sick that will be here today, will be healed when they shall be living in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, it shall be deliverance in this place today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, oh Lord. God, that your, your presence name, will fill this place Hallelujah. from the altar to the pew. In, name, in the mighty Jesus. name of Jesus. In your name, Lord Jesus. Lord, take glory Hallelujah. over this service. Do that Hallelujah. which only you can Hallelujah. do. Do new thing in our lives today. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Honor we to your name. Glory. We take authority in the Hallelujah. name of Christ Jesus Hallelujah. against Hallelujah. every kingdom of darkness, Hallelujah. against every power Hallelujah. from the pit of hell that wants to destroy the service of today. In the glory. mighty we name of Jesus, we, we pull glory. them down. We pull down the stronghold. The Bible says, for the Hallelujah. weapons of our warfare, we they are not carnal, but they are mighty God. through God in pulling us on stronghold. Casting down of imaginations. Hallelujah. Lord, today Hallelujah. we bring down every stronghold. Yes, we so cast Almighty them God. down in the mighty name in of Jesus. Jesus name. Be glorified, Jesus Lord. Name. Holy Spirit, have your way Jesus in this place. Name. Fill every believer today. Hallelujah. Fill everyone Hallelujah. in this house today. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit Hallelujah. of God, fill us today. God. Fill us today. God. Fill us with your joy. Hallelujah. Fill us with your anointing. Your fill name, us with God. peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Be glorified, Hallelujah. Lord, today. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name in we Jesus pray. In Jesus' name. In Amen. In Jesus' name. 
Praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, one more time, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Let's worship with our praise team. Let's worship with our praise team as they lead us today in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You already already know what to do. How many people came to bless the Lord this morning? Do we have any free people in the house? Do have a couple? I'm going to read you two scriptures. Galatians 5.1 says, For it is is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. I need some free people to make some noise. Some people who are slaves to sin and the shackles of sin have fallen off and you are free in Christ. Make some noise this morning. It says in Romans 6, 7 that for one who has died has been set free from sin. We got to die to ourselves. Amen. We got to die to ourselves. Amen. The last one says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. If you believe that the spirit of the Lord is here, I want you to just shake it off. Let's worship the King of Kings. Is that all right? Come on, 
We came this morning. Some of us is the only time we've come and focused on God and worshiped his name. So let's make this time count. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. with the young people this weekend and I'm just like I may not have said this full out but serving Christ is the best choice I ever made I don't know who I was talking to other than the young people this weekend and I was saying you know it wasn't always easy serving the Lord you know like I grew up in church like I used to make jokes that I was literally born in church with a tambourine like they gave me one as I came out of the womb legit like I was saying to the young people like I, I didn't have a choice I had to play in church I had to play keyboard in church I used to try and turn it down and my dad would be like hallelujah hallelujah and he'd turn it back up and I would just oh. <laughs> and like you know that like it helped me build character <laughs> and I you know I do have my parents and spiritual fathers to, to thank they fostered a love for Christ and sometimes I do get in trouble with my friends because they'll come to me with an issue and I'm like all right let's pray I'm not a counselor, but I know the great counselor. Like I I know from from past experiences that when I let go of things and I just say, okay, God, like a while back, my, my thing was, okay, God, you do you, because you're gonna do you anyways. So here you go. Like, right, I got so frustrated trying to do my own thing until I finally did what the Bible said, like casting all my cares on him. It actually works. So we're doing let praises rise. Like we wanted praises to rise from here. <laughs> um, I don't know I, I just I, my desire is for everyone to love God and to have this relationship with Jesus like he is amazing and as we sing this we want praises to rise from this place we want the spirit of the Lord to dwell here I know we have baptisms today that's a good thing saints of God people turning from sin and saying God I want to follow you
know, there are times I, I see, I don't go to secular concerts, but I, I see them on TV. And you can ask my husband, I get vexed. I do, I get upset when I see these stadiums full, full of people. And I'm going to be bold facing, going to hell, raising up their, I mean, for me, like when hands are raised, that's a sign of worship to my king. And Ed Sheeran or whoever, Michael Jackson, can get whole crowds just waving to Satan. Saying, so God, I, I sing this and I say, yeah, God, all I want is to, to see people excited about you. I want for the people of God, for Believer's Church, to outdo the bombers in terms of praise. I'm sorry, saints of God, but our blue bombers and that little pig skin ball gets more praise than my God. And I'm sorry, but that ball didn't die a bloody death on our old rugged cross. It didn't, do, it didn't put money in my pocket. That ball didn't pay my bills. That ball didn't pull me out of sin. That ball didn't give me a hope of eternal life. But Jesus did. And sometimes this place is treated like a choice. I can go to church, or maybe I won't. God fulfilled my, my wish list this week, so I'll be here. To the end, just sit down. Boo! Shame on you. And some, some of us saints of God will you can just give ourselves you over to this more than down. God. We have a saint that's giving their life to Christ. I want you to know this morning that heaven is rejoicing. Can we join heaven this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we clap our hands to the Lord in this house? Amen. Hallelujah. I feel victory in this place this morning. Whatever you need is in this room today because Jesus is in this room today. Hallelujah. One more time. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says there, there's much rejoicing in the presence of the angels over one sinner who repents and over 99 righteous people who do not repent. Hallelujah. I think we ought to clap our hands and thank the Lord. This is uh, Sister Precious' son. And I asked Precious if I could share this. But you all know that last Sunday is her two years since she got baptized. And let me tell you something else. She said I can say this, that Jesus set her free two years ago. Amen. Hallelujah. No cravings, no anything like that. Everything that she was dealing with, God took it. And we're baptizing her kids today because of her step. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Stretch your hands to the front. Father, we pray for Joshua right now, God. I plead the blood of Jesus over him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Lord, keep him from the enemy, from the evil one that wants to destroy him, Lord. I pray that he would be raised up in this house. Lord, let him see Jesus in his mom. And let him, Lord, just just be called by you, Lord. I pray that you would use him for this next generation of young people, God. In Jesus' mighty name, plug your hand with this, plug your nose with this hand. Grab my wrist with that one. Joshua, upon the profession of your faith and in obedience to the word of God, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. This is Precious's other son, Christopher. Why don't you stretch your hands to the front? We're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that same prayer, Lord. Use him. Lord, let him see your light in his mother, Lord. I pray that you would keep him from this world. Keep him from the things that the devil would try to throw at him, Lord. 
Lord, let him encounter you, God. I pray that you would use him, Lord, for your kingdom and glory. Raise him up, God. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Plug your nose with this hand, man, and grab my wrist with that one. Christopher, upon the profession of your faith and in obedience to the word of God, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah.
the voice of triumph in this house. We got the victory. We're born again. Heaven is our home. We're washed in the blood. We're born again. We're filled with the Holy Ghost. We know where we're going. Hallelujah. Our steps are ordered by the Lord. Why don't you shout off the heaviness and shout off the depression and the weight and the sin that would try to hold you down in this service. My God, I feel victory in this house. Shout. Silence is the language of defeat, but shouting is the language of victory. Shouting is the language of victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not defeated. We're not cast down. But we are victorious in Christ Jesus this morning. We are the head and not the tail. We've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. A royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a peculiar people. Hallelujah. The devil doesn't like church like this, but we're going to have church like this. And we want every demon in hell to know that we're saved, sanctified, washed in the blood, filled with the Holy Ghost, that we got a reason today, church. We got what the world's looking for. You might not know it, but you got what the world's looking for. Hallelujah. You're a city set on a hill, a light that cannot be hidden. The salt of the earth. Hallelujah. One more time, let's clap our hands. We're Pentecostal, we're apostolic, we get loud, we get rowdy, we get boisterous because we know whom we believe in and we are persuaded that he is able to keep us unto that day. Hallelujah. Just wait on the Lord. Give him the fruit of your lips. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We're not ashamed to lift our voice in this house, God. We magnify your name, Lord. We praise your name. Child of God, why don't you just lift up a praise? Give him thanks in this house. He inhabits the praises of his people. Let's give him something to inhabit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We're not ashamed, God. We're not ashamed to praise you out loud. The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas started singing praises and hymns to the Lord. At midnight, you might be in your midnight hour right now. You don't know where to look or where to turn, but Jesus is in this room. He can help you today. Come on, get up in here with us. Come on. Be 
Spirit of God, Spirit of God, Spirit of God, Spirit of God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Move on me, God, today. If you need something, come on. We'll pray for you right now. The Holy Ghost is here. God is in this room. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Sister Lydia, would you come pray with this young lady?
every shoulder of shoulder pain. Why don't you clap your hands in this house? Thank you, Jesus. You too? Two people, shoulder pain. Whatever you need from God, why don't you just raise a hand and say, Lord, I receive healing. I receive what you have for me, Lord Jesus. Shataba shaka. a house of miracles this is a house of miracles I want you to stand with me in this house of miracles right now if you would stand with me I want you to find somebody to shake their hand and say silver and gold have I none but such as I have I give you Jesus just turn to somebody say I give you Jesus today I give you Jesus shake two or three people's hand I give you Jesus he's more than enough He's more than enough. I give you Jesus. He's our healer, our deliverer. I give you Jesus, a friend that's to get closer than a brother. Hey, 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 my God. Woo! Hallelujah. I give you Jesus. I give you Jesus. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Are y'all thankful to be in church this morning? Amen. I feel better since I've been to the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Before I forget, we're having a fundraiser directly after this service. Hamburgers. Hallelujah hamburgers. Come on, somebody. And uh, French fries. And all the proceeds are going to go to the Sunday school department um, so that so, so they can help with the, um, you know, snacks and stuff like that when the kids are in class. But uh, that's directly after this service. So if you don't have any lunch plans, we encourage you to stay around. Grab a Hallelujah hamburger and some French fries and a drink. I think the, a combo for a fries drink and a hamburger is uh, $7. And I was like, man, that's pretty cheap. We need to raise those prices. But uh, it's pretty cheap. So we encourage you to do that. At this time, we're going to wait on you for your tithes and offerings. But before we do that, you know, we've been doing lots of upgrades around here. As you guys can see, cameras... Uh, drum things, microphones, um, TVs for Sunday school, for the youth. Uh, we got a new sign replaced because the wind blew it over. And I told Pastor, you know, the Bible says that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. That dang old devil blew down our sign. But all these things cost money. And, you know, we don't get up here and um, we want to be good stewards with what God is doing. You know, you guys probably hear this before, but all the pastors here work full-time jobs. There's nobody getting rich or getting um, a secret jet fund or something like that. All the money that goes into this house goes pretty much back into this house and back out in, into reaching people and trying to do things. And I believe in Jesus' name. We had a, we had a youth thing on the weekend. It was a lock-in. We're going to be doing more of that. I believe that there's going to be a youth drop-in. There's going to be things going on here during the week. And all that happens because of you guys and because of our giving. So let's keep that in mind this morning and let's give unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let's bless the Lord this morning. 
Sister Diane's in the back if you want to give by debit or credit. We have the offering plates up here at the front. We can march around and present our gifts and our offerings. You can also download the Tithely app in the App Store or the Play Store. God bless you guys. Let's give unto the Lord this morning in Jesus' name. Youth class, I'll meet you guys on the other side. You guys are dismissed, and we'll see you on the other side.
doing. It's wonderful to worship. Praise the Lord. And he loves it. He loves it. Our dear Father. Greetings from Believer's Church this morning out there who's ever listening. And our members, of course, and anybody new here. You raise your hand. Is there new people here this morning? I think there's a few. One over here, too. Yes. I, if you haven't filled out a Connect card, I see an usher coming right now. Just raise your hand again, and he will give you a card to fill out. It's important. We want to connect with you. We want a fellowship with you. We want you to become the body of Christ with us. Family picnic coming. This is going to be August the 13th. It's going to be at Assiniboine Park, 2 to 6, and uh, Site 3. But we'll work out those details when it, when it draws near. We do have a bouncy houses, I'm told, which is very exciting for the children. And, um, yeah, <laughs> if you are bringing anything, dessert or um, salad, whatever, please sign up and let us know at the um, hospitality desk as well as um, bring a friend, bring your neighbor, join us, bring them into the family. We'd love to have them. We'd love to meet them. Next Friday is ladies' night. We are going to the Olive Garden for 5 o'clock. And please, please, if you are coming, we need to know how many because we've got to make reservations. So there's a sign-up sheet, again, out front at the uh, hospitality desk. So please sign that. It's so important for us. And, um, yeah, we're going to the Olive Garden, and then we will commence to go to my place. We'll have dessert and coffee and tea and just have some fellowship there. So please sign up if you intend to come. Again, uh, there is a uh, fundraiser for the Sunday School this morning. Uh, Pastor Dylan has already mentioned that. It's important uh, to build up the uh, younger children and support them. So if you could do that this morning, we'd appreciate it. We start off our week with wonderful CR, Celebrate Recovery. This is a 12-step, Christ-based program. And it is for those who are struggling Hurts, habits, or hang-ups. We know it's impossible for men to do many, many things. It says in the scriptures, it's impossible for man. But with Christ, all things are possible. Yeah, I say all things are possible. Amen, amen. Where there seems to be no way, he will make a way. He will make a way. That is Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. It's important. Again, it's so important when we're struggling we, don't, we should never be alone. We should never have to battle alone. We need, we need support, and this is a wonderful program, so please consider taking it. That is 6 o'clock on Tuesday. Wednesday night is Wednesday night revival. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. When revival breaks out, God breaks in. Amen? Now, that's not going to happen if we're sitting home. And I don't, I know people say I'm watching you on the internet. There is no comparison to being here in person on holy ground, God's sanctuary, with others in unity with the same mindset on Jesus Christ. We need that. We need it. That's how we grow. That's how we grow. So Wednesday night, it's a wonderful service. We always get a wonderful service from the pastor, a lesson, a teaching. It's wonderful. So that's 7 o'clock. Saturday, upper room prayer. Again, we had that last night. And this is where we call, we are calling down the holy fire. It really is. It starts on Saturday night because that's where holy fire comes from, prayer. Amen? Things happen when that fire comes down. There's a shaking. And you cannot orchestrate it, nor can you manufacture it. It comes from prayer. And we are here on Saturday night, and uh, it's a wonderful evening. You should try and make it at 7 o'clock. And we see the results on Sunday morning here. People are healed. Chains are broken. Relationships are restored. Hearts. We need prayer. We need prayer. We're desperate for prayer. We need prayer in our city. We're a mess. We really are. So please, if you can make it on Saturday night, it's so important. 
Sunday service is again next Sunday along with Sunday school, 11 o'clock. Do you feel the Holy Spirit here this morning? Amen. You're going to leave here with the Holy Spirit this morning? I know I am. I am. We've had a wonderful start, and we're going to have a wonderful finish, and you're going to leave here on fire. Amen. God bless you. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Would you, I see Brother Benjamin at the back, and some of the brothers and sisters are praying for him. Would you just turn around and stretch your hand to Benjamin? He's been struggling in his body in the hospital. Lord, we speak healing right now to this young man in the name of Jesus Christ. We take authority and dominion over sickness and pain in his body. Lord Jesus, you are the healer, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth all our diseases. And so right now, God, we speak healing to this young man. We command this pain and this sickness to go from his body in the name of Jesus Christ. We stand on your word. We call on your name. By your stripes, he's healed right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Father, that you would meet every need he has in his life. Lord, he hasn't been able to work because of this sickness, and so we place it in your hand today. And we pray that you would move, Lord, and turn it all around for the glory of God. And the church said, in Jesus' name, let it be done. Oh, one more time. Say, in Jesus' name. Oh, clap your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just before we get into the word of the Lord this morning, I just want to make a couple of quick uh, announcements again. First of all, our parking lot here, we are working on getting all the buses and everything moved out of there. Uh, this is our parking lot that we own, and uh, they, the men have been working out there getting it cleaned up. And so we're asking uh, for our regular church people, uh, as much as you can, if you could park in that lot, and so that we can keep the, uh, the roadway clear and, and some of our, our out front parking clear for guests that would be coming in that don't really know about this this lot and so we ask for your help there and uh, what else do I have here oh yes I just want to make mention we have some new people working on, on in the back sound booth and uh, there's a bit of a learning curve but they're doing a good job uh, cameras uh, we did I don't know where our camera guy went here but we do have some new camera guys working and uh, we're thankful for that it's always good when people uh, want to be involved in the kingdom of God. Amen. I do want to make mention that next Sunday after service, we want to have a meeting uh, with all those who are willing to help us at our, uh, our, our church picnic, our family fun day. And so if you could just stay after the service next Sunday for a few minutes, we do want to, to talk to you and get our, our picnic planned and, uh, and ready to go. Praise God. Amen. I think that's all the announcements I had. And we're going to sing. They already sang it a little earlier, but we're going to sing this chorus again before we go to the word of the Lord. I have decided to follow Jesus. Amen. Has anybody made up that your mind and you made that decision today? No turning back. Amen. Let's sing it as we get ready for the word of God here today. I have decided yes. to follow Jesus.
Praise God. Praise God. Would you remain standing with me as we turn to Mark, Matthew chapter 19. Matthew 19 as we stand for the reading of the word of God. Amen. We're going to reverence his word. That means no in and out, up and down, back and forth. What else can I say? Talking, blowing bubbles, whatever you're doing, clipping your nails. Let's just all stop and reverence the word of God. Is that all right? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. I didn't think you were going to get so excited about it, but I'm glad you are. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's the word of God. Amen. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 18. While he spake these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshiped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come lay your hand on her and she will live. What faith? So Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And suddenly a woman had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, If I can only touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made well. But Jesus turned around and saw her and said, Be of good cheer, daughter, thy faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. Don't you just get upset when somebody interrupts your miracle to get their miracle? Mm -mm. And the woman was made well from that hour. When Jesus came to the ruler's house, he saw the flute players and the noisy crowd. And what were they doing? Wailing. They got the sad flute music. Praise the Lord, Brother Bruce. Give Brother Bruce a hand from Fairford. Amen. We just preached camp meeting up there for him last weekend. Tremendous time. They had the sad flutes going, and everybody was wailing. What a sound that must have been. And he said to them, make room, for the girl is not dead, but sleepeth. In the King James Version, I'm reading out of the New King James for our new converts' sake this morning. But in the King James Version, it says, They laughed him to scorn. This is what the New King James Version says. And they ridiculed him. And when the crowd, I like this, and when the crowd was put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And the report of this went out into all that land. Woo! My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. I want to preach to somebody this morning on this thought. To wait outside. Wait outside. Tell your neighbor if you're not with me, just wait outside. Whoa, hallelujah. Father, we thank you for what you've already done in this house. The lives that have been touched, God, and the miracles and healings that have taken place. I know you're not done. You woke me up early this morning, God. Lord, to give this message to somebody. Maybe it's just one or two, but i got a feeling it's a whole lot more than that. God, we just need to tell some things to wait outside. And so I pray that you would touch me as I bring forth your word. God, that you would anoint our ears to hear and help us to receive what the Spirit is saying to the church in Winnipeg today. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And you may be seated in the name of the Lord. Luke 8, in the book of Luke, he, he records it like this. He said, and while he was speaking, someone came from the ruler of the synagogue saying to him, Your daughter is dead. Do not bother troubling the teacher anymore. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, Do not be afraid. Only believe and she shall be made well. And when he came to the house, he permitted no one to go in except Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother of the girl. Now all wept and mourned for her, but he said, Do not weep, for she is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him, knowing that she was dead. But he put them all outside, took her by the hand, and called, saying, Little girl, arise. Arise. Then her spirit returned, and she rose immediately, and he commanded that she should be given something to eat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them to tell no man what had happened. I want to start out by telling you today, not everybody that is with you is for you. Oh, Lord, it's going to be rough. Not everybody that's with you 
is for you. And the, the great crowd had assembled. <laughs> I don't know who brought the flute, but they brought a flute. And they were playing the sad funeral music, Brother, Brother John. And, and everybody was wailing. And everybody was crying. The little girl was dead. What do you do? Well, it's time to mourn. It's time to cry. It's time to show our support because... The little girl is dead, and we got to show everybody how upset we are about that. And so they were really putting on a production with the tears and the wailing and the mourning. And uh, I've, I've been to funerals, Lord help me, hundreds of funerals, where people who didn't even know the deceased came and were crying and bawling and squalling. And I stood there and I said, oh, is this, is this a close relative? No, I've never met them before. Lord, help us. I'd hate to see you when somebody close to you dies. You're going to be a mess. And so everybody was there doing their thing. And somebody even sent the message, don't bother getting Jesus. The girl is dead. It's over. There's no hope here. There's nothing to do except mourn and cry. Play the flute. Make some sandwiches. Order the flowers. Get ready to have a funeral. But Jesus said, I'm going. And when he got there, he said, this girl is not dead, but she's sleeping. Now listen, this is how fast it changed. They went from wailing and crying and playing the sad flute to laughing and mocking him and ridiculing him. The sound of mourning was changed to the sound of scorn and laughing within a moment's time as they laughed him and ridiculed him to such a place where he finally said, all right, I've had enough of this. You've got to get out. If there's going to be a miracle here today, you've got to get out. If there's going to be a resurrection today, you've got to get it. Oh, you're not hearing this preacher today. If Jesus had to get rid of the unbelief before a miracle could happen, you certainly do. Uh, if Jesus had to get rid of those who weren't with him, how much more do you have to say goodbye to those who aren't with you? Uh, well, I'm going to preach up in here this morning because some people only want to be around you as long as you're struggling. Mm, I'm going to mess it all up here this morning. As long as you're struggling, they'll be there playing their flute. They'll be there to cry with you. They'll be, as long as you're broke, busted, and disgusted, they'll be there with you. They'll bemoan and cry and wail. They'll cry with you when you have nothing. But they don't know how to celebrate you when things begin to turn around. Oh, somebody ought to be running an aisle right now. I come to tell you, there are some people in your life, you just need to tell them to wait outside. If God's going to do in your life what he wants to do, some people have to leave the room. Some people need to get out of the house. Some people need to wait outside until God does what he does. <laughs> After the miracle happened and the girl was resurrected, amen, everybody again went back to rejoicing in an amazement. You see, there are some people who will cry with you when you're crying, but when God is trying to work a miracle, they're nowhere to be found. But then when it's all said and done, they're there to high-five you again. <laughs> They don't know how to celebrate you when God is turning it around for you. They'll be with you in the crack house, but not in the church house. Oh, Brother Ose, I said it. I said they'll be with you in the crack house, in the meth house, in the whore house, but they won't be with you in the church house. I'll go to the crack house with you, but I won't go to the church house with you. I'll go to the poor house with you, but I won't go to the church house with you. I've come to tell you, amen, some people need to be put out of the room so God can do what he wants to do in your life. If I'm preaching to you, wave your hand at me this morning. Woo! 
Hallelujah. They'll weep with you in the house of mourning, but won't worship with you in the house of God. Yeah. They'll cheer you on in every other area of your life, except when it comes to what God is trying to do. Then the enemy will, oh, I want you to know, the enemy will always place somebody in your life as a decoy, a deterrent, a distraction, or a discouragement. I'm going to give you that list again. Write it down on the back of your neighbor's head. The devil will always place someone in your life as a decoy, a deterrent, a distraction, or a discouragement. Those people have to be put out of the room. Oh, tell your neighbor, put them out of the room. Put them out of the room. Jesus said she's not dead, she's sleeping. I've come to wake her up. But if I'm going to wake her up, the distractions have got to get out of the room. The discouragement's got to get, hey, the decoys have got, take that flu out. Somebody grab a tambourine. Hey Amen. We don't need a flute right now. We're getting ready to have revival. We're getting ready to have a resurrection. We're getting ready to shout. We're getting ready to de- take your mournful sound somewhere else. I don't need it in my life. I don't need it in my house. Somebody say, take that sound somewhere else. Uh. You don't need friends that will keep you from the house of God. You need four friends that will tear the roof off and say, whatever I have to do to get you to Jesus, I'm going to do it. I come to tell somebody, you've got people that will do everything in their power to keep you from this house. There are people in your, you know I'm preaching you the truth. You've got people that will discourage you to try to keep you out of the house of God, to keep you away from the people of God, to keep you away from the things of God. With friends like that, you don't need enemy because they are your enemy. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I feel like preaching. I said, I feel like preaching in this house. With friends like that, who needs enemies? With friends like that, I don't need any enemy. Take your mournful sound somewhere else. Take your flute somewhere else. Take your distraction somewhere else. Because some people are just going to have to wait outside while you get your miracle. Some people are going to have to wait outside while you get your healing. Some people are going to have to wait outside while you get your recovery. They're going to have to wait outside while you get delivered you're gonna they're gonna have to wait outside while god promotes you they're gonna have to wait outside while god anoints you some people can't go with you where god is trying to take you honey you gotta wait outside hey I love you. I appreciate your flute playing. I appreciate the salad you brought. But for what God is doing right now, you're going to have to wait outside. You can't be part of this season. You can't be part of what God's doing. You can't be part of where God's taking me. You're going to have to wait with your unbelief outside the door. Second Corinthians 6.14 Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Oh, Lord, I want to preach to somebody. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What communion has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with Belial? What part has a believer with an unbeliever? Oh, what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For for you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out. Turn your neighbor and say, come out. There's certain people you have to come out of. Certain neighborhoods you have to come out of. Certain mindsets you have to come out of. Certain tradition you have to come out of he said if you come out from among them and be somebody say I'm separated to the Lord amen amen come out from among them and be separate saith the Lord 
touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you and be a father to you. You shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. I, I believe that believers should not be in unity with unbelievers. How can you be? It's impossible. You're on two different roads, two different destinations. You can't be in unison and in unity. You can't be in one accord. But can I take it a step further today? There are some people who call themselves believers that I refuse to be unified with. Oh, I said it. Because they're not going the same direction. We might be both going to heaven. Amen. They might love Jesus, but they're not willing to celebrate me when it's my time for a miracle. They're not willing to celebrate me when it's my time for promotion. They're not willing to celebrate me when it's my time for a breakthrough. Honey, you're just going to have to wait outside with your lonesome self because I've come too far to turn around and to give up on what God is doing in my own somebody needs to shout to the Lord right now hallelujah hallelujah God's doing something in, would you wave your hand if you feel like God's doing something in your life yeah, look at this. Look at then you're going to have to be picky who you hang out with. Yay! You're going to have to be selective who you allow to whisper in your ear. You're going to have to be picky with who gives you direction and advice. Oh, you're not hearing me today. Some people, they might they might mean well, but they can't be in the room with you when God is doing what he's doing. I love everybody. But not everybody can walk with me. <laughs> oh, I'm going to say that again. I love everybody. But not everybody can walk with me. Not everybody can be in the room with me. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Not everybody can be in the secret place with me. Not, not everybody can be in that place where the anointing is poured out with me. If you can't celebrate me in my resurrection, then don't mourn with me when everything's going wrong. I need somebody who knows how to pray for me, who knows how to lift me up, who knows how to encourage me, who knows how to believe in me who knows how to tell me don't quit don't give up keep on praying keep on believing keep on going keep on serving the Lord I need friends who will tear the roof off the house to get me to where Jesus is if you can't do that then just wait outside Uh, hallelujah. Just wait outside. I'll be out when we're done. I'll be out when the child is alive. I'll be out when the miracle's over. I'll be out once the anointing comes. I'll be back out. But right now, I've got to go alone. See, Jesus. Yeah. Hey. Hey! Oh, come on, somebody else get on your feet right now and shut the door. Shut the door behind you. Just wait outside, honey. I've got an appointment I can't miss. Woo! Yay! Hallelujah! Shake out on the Oh, one more time. Clap your hands to the Lord. Uh, 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 my God, the Holy Ghost is moving in this house. I can't be unequally yoked with you. 
Pastor O say, come on down here with me. Hallelujah. I can't be unequally yoked. You see where I'm going? I'm going over there. I've got an appointment with destiny. I've got an appointment with a new anointing. I've got an appointment with a new level. So if you're going to go with me, you're welcome to go with me. But if you start pulling and if you start pushing and if you start trying to distract me, you're just going to have to wait outside because I'm not going to miss what God has promised me. Somebody shout to the Lord in this house. We've been distracted too many times. We've been discouraged too many. Oh, she's dead. You know she's dead. The doctor said she's dead. It's all. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what the prophet of gloom said. All I know is Jesus is in the house. Just wait outside and give Jesus a chance to do what Jesus does. You see, God is doing something in the realm of the spirit right now. Something that you don't understand. People don't like it when it gets like this. But they don't understand that God is already pouring in anointing. He's already pouring in healing virtue. Lives are already being turned around. The preaching of the word. The preaching of the word. Come on. How shall they hear without a preacher? Oh, the preacher's preaching to you the word of God today. And the word of God is put them outside and let God do his thing. Who? Be seated if you can. Ecclesiastes 9, 4, 9. Two are better than one. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. If they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how shall, can one be warm alone? Though any may be over, though one may be overpowered, but another two can withstand him. And a threefold cord, a threefold cord, threefold cord is not quickly broken. I want to tell you this: if we're together in unity, Amen. God can move. If we're together in unity, there is strength in our number. If we're together in unity, nothing can overcome us. But if you're not with me, I'd rather be cold, tired, and alone and be with Jesus. Oh, you're not hearing me. I'd like to have you in unity with me. But if you're not going to get with me, get out of my way. If you're not going to get with me, wait outside. Amos says this, Amos 3.3. Can two walk together unless they agree? No, they can't. You can start out close. Come on, brother, say help me again. Just, Just with me. All right, I guess. Now point your feet just a little bit that way. Okay. Amos. You see, right now, it looks like we're together, right? We're, we're pretty close. It looks like we're on the same page. Looks like we've got the same goals to start walking a little bit. But if we're not completely aligned, little by little, oh, Lord, little by little, we're drifting. Little by little, we're going our separate ways. We started out so close, but now there's distance between. You better make sure, honey, who you got beside you is really going where you're going. I said, you need to be sure their feet are pointed the same direction as yours because you don't want to wait till six months, six years down the road and find out they were never intending to go where you are going. Well, let me preach to the single people that are here. I, I'll go to church with you. I'll go to church, but my feet are pointed at the world. 
I'll stand with you in church, but my feet are pointed at the... It may look like we're pretty tight right now, but give me six months or a year after the I do's are said, and you'll find out my feet were never pointed towards Calvary. My feet... You better know if, if they're really with you or not. Lord, help me. I'm going to say some things and just get it out there. Because I am so tired of fake Christians who will snuggle up beside you. Just tell me all about it, sweetheart. Just tell me all your struggles. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to... They don't want to know your struggles to help you. They want to know your struggles to manipulate you. Oh, I said it. I said it. I said it. I said it. You better be careful. Oh, we are to cast all our cares on who? On him. On him. On him. Because he cares for you. I'm tired of Jezebel's cousin up beside me. Just tell me all your problems. Oh, Delilah, get outside. You can't go where I'm going. Jezebel, get outside. You can't go where I'm going. Wait outside. God is doing something in my life. Wait outside. Wait outside. My God, am I preaching to anybody in this house today? <laughs> Lord, help me. First Kings 19. In verse 19. So he departed from there and found Elisha. We're talking about the man of God called Elijah. And he found Elisha. The son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he was with the 12th. And then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. Come on, Pastor Rose, I'm going to preach you some more. You're going to get my sweaty mantle. Pretend like you're plowing. Get your plow out in front of you. There you go. I don't know what kind of plow this is, but, but we're, he's plowing with the, with the oxen. And the man of God comes by and sees this young man. And he takes off his mantle. And he just throws it on him like that. And he just keeps on walking. Just like he had done nothing. And the young man said, oh, just wait a second here. He said, if you let me go kiss my mama and my daddy goodbye, I'll follow you the rest of my life. The man of God said, what have I done to you? What do you mean, what have, I, what have you done to me? You let me feel your anointing. You let me feel the weight of your mantle. How can I ever be happy plowing again? Oh, Lord, help me. And once you feel the touch of his anointing, how could you ever go back to a crack house? How could you ever go back to Main Street? Hey, man, Jones and Forgab and Pinton. How could... Ah, yeah, preacher knows your secrets. How, hey, how can you go back to the cesspool and the vomit and the pig manure that God brought you out of? He said, no, 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 no. He said, if you'll just let me say goodbye, I'll mean it. And I'll never go back again. And the, and the young man not only said goodbye to daddy and mama, but he said, daddy, I'm sorry. I hope you got insurance on this thing. I just burned your plow. And I killed the oxen because I don't want there to ever be any reason why I would ever leave the call of God and come back here again. There's some things you need to get rid of. Some things that need to be destroyed. Some things you need to burn. 
Lord, help me today. Burn the bridges so you can't cross them again. Burn the plow so you won't go back again. Amen. In that relationship so you can't go back again. Well, pastor, I'm just trying to win them. No, you're not trying to win them. You're keeping them close so when you're backside, you can go back to them. I don't understand why he passed, preaches this way because I've been pastoring in the inner city for 11 years. And I've seen it over and over and over. Somebody today, you need to burn the plow. You need to put your unbelievers outside. People who refuse to celebrate you outside. People who refuse to sit with you in church outside. People who will party with you on Friday but won't worship with you on Sunday. Put them out of the room. Close the door and let God work a miracle in your life. Oh, Lord. Lord, help me close. Oh, Joseph, he had a dream. He was daddy's favorite. Daddy gave him a coat of many colors. And he had dreams. And he told his dreams. You see, he said, can I just tell you? Sometimes the worst thing you can do is tell your dream to somebody else. I like Mary. When Gabriel showed up to Mary and said, hey, Mary, you're blessed among women, highly favored of the Lord. Ooh, you're really special. And the Holy Ghost is going to overshadow you. And that thing that is born of you is going to be of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. She didn't put it on Facebook. The Bible says she pondered these things in her heart. Because if you're not careful, the person you tell your dream with will be the very person who kills it. The person you share your heart with will be the one who will try to manipulate you so you don't get ahead of them. Oh, who do you think you are? You think God loves you more than he loves me? No, I don't want you to be used in that way. No, God's not going to do Oh, my Lord, who am I preaching to here today? Stop telling everybody everything God tells you and just wait on the Lord. I learned my lesson. God spoke something into my heart. He sent two prophets to come by and confirm it. I talked to one of my pastor friends. I said, look, listen to what the Lord has spoken to me. And, you you know, you just see it on there. Well, bless the Lord. Isn't that nice? We'll just see what God does. No, 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 no. You're not going to steal my joy. You're not going to. You know what? Just, Just wait outside. Just wait outside. And when the miracle's done, I'll let you know. Actually, I won't even have to let you know because God will bless me and you'll see the blessing of God. You'll see the provision of God. You'll see the anointing of God. Amen. Because what God does behind closed doors never stays there. He lets that out for the world to see it. So Joseph told his brothers, I had a dream. And in my dream, you were all bowing down to me. Oh, they were mad. They were mad. So he went and told his daddy. Even maybe my daddy will understand. And so when he went and told his daddy, and even his daddy got mad. You think I, your daddy's going to bow down to you? You're arrogant. You're full of pride, Joseph. You see, when, you, when you're full of confidence in God, and you're full of promise, people who aren't spiritual, people, oh my Lord, help me. They see it as pride. I'm not full of pride. I'm full of promise. Somebody say, I've got promise. I'm not full of pride. I'm full of promise. Because I know what God has spoken over me. He will surely bring it to pass. And so, listen to this. In Genesis 20, 37, 12, Then his brothers went to feed their flocks in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. And he said to him, here I am. Then he said to them, please go and see if it is well with your brother. Go check on your brothers and see if it's well with the flocks and bring back word to me. And so he 
sent him out of the valley of Hebron, and so he went to Shechem. And getting down to verse 30 or verse 18, when they saw him afar off, even before he came near them, they conspired to kill him. Then they said one to another, Look, the dreamer is coming. Long story short, they threw him in a pit, sold him into slavery. He ended up in prison. They forgot about him. Nobody had his back. But I'm going to tell you, the promises of God are yea and amen to them that believe. And I come to encourage somebody here this morning at Believer's Church. If God has given you a word, if God has given you a promise, I don't care who's against it. My God, I feel like preaching. I don't care who doesn't agree. <laughs> I don't care who doesn't believe you. I don't care who can't see it. If God has given it to you, it doesn't matter if there's a pit or a prison, if there's false accusation, if they lie on you, Amen. God will surely bring it to pass. Somebody needs to raise your hand right now and say, I believe God is going to bring my promise to pass. I'm not full of pride. I'm pregnant with promise. I'm pregnant with promise. And if you don't believe in my promise, that's okay. I'm not going to get mad at you, but you are going to have to wait outside. I can't have you in my inner circle. If you can't celebrate what God is doing in my life. Skip down and I am trying to close. 20 years. 20, say that, 20 years. 20 years. Between the time Joseph got the promise to the day that his brothers came did not recognize who he was. They needed food. They were in a famine. And all they knew was they were bowing down to the guy who had the food. 20 years had come and gone. They didn't recognize the dreamer. Ah, one of my favorite scriptures in this whole story tells about when they bowed down, Pastor Ose. The Bible says, Joseph remembered the dream. I don't know who I'm preaching to here today. Maybe some time has passed since God gave you that word. Maybe some time has passed since a man of God stood over you and said, Thus saith the Lord. Maybe some time has passed since you stood at the altar and God spoke sweet and low into your spirit. But time is nothing with God. And it could just so be he's waiting for you to get the right people in the room. Can I, can I just say this, child of God? Can I just say this to you? Not everybody has the right to be in the room with you. Well, that's arrogant. No, that's not arrogant. Because not everybody is going where you're going. Not everybody can walk where you're walking. You're going to have to be careful when you're holding your dead promise and you need the power of God active in your life. You're going to be, have to be selective who's in the room with you. God use you right now.
For I have brought to your remembrance this day, says the Lord, the moments when I have spoken to you. And there have been times in your life when you have almost seen the fruition of the promise that I've given you. But you were not in alignment with me and my plan, says the Lord. And although I was ready to bless you, you were not ready to receive. And although I was ready to advance you, you were not ready to be advanced. Hear the word of the Lord to you today, my child. For I say, clear the room. Get rid of the unbelief, the doubt, the witchcraft. Oh, Jesus. Thus says the Lord, clean out your space and make room for me to do what I said I would do. For I have not forgotten you, but you have not made room for me, says the Lord of hosts. Oh, Lord, come on, raise your hands all over this room. Oh, my Lord and my God. Pastor Nidra, come on, we gotta, we gotta, I got to quit. The Holy Ghost, my God. Oh, let's get on our feet in this house. Let's get on our feet in this house. This altar is open right now. My God, this altar ought to be full. Come on, come on, come on. The altar is open. Come on. If God's talking to you, get in this altar right now. That's it. Make room. Get right to the front. Make room. This altar needs to be filled here this morning. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Just respond. I'm not going to beg you to come. But is there somebody here you want to respond to the word of God? that has been preached over you. You want to respond to the tongues and interpretation that just went forward in this house? Come on. Come on. God is not going to wave his magic wand over your situation. You are going to have to clear the room. My God. Come on. Come on. This altar's open. This altar's open for you. Move right in. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, it's you and God. It's you and God right now. Come on, come and talk to Him. Lord, there's some things I need to clear out of my room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. There's some things that I've got to go today. Mm, come on. Come on. Don't let this service pass you by. God wants to pour out his promises in your life. He wants to bring those promises to pass. But I feel so strongly there are some things that need to wait outside. Come on. Come on. Go ahead, Pastor Nita. Go ahead. Free pastors just to pray with these people. Altar workers. Yes. 
saints want to join us. Come on. Come on. That's what this altar is for today.
Just wanna be with you. 